Hi, I'm Don and I'm an old school kind of guy. Now I got one of those holy moly questions. I don't know what holy moly means, but that's what this question is. Colton asked me on one of my other videos and his question was about his water. Now it's from the video I did on city water versus well water and I'll put the link in the uh, comments below. But Colton's problem is there's a lot of agricultural right nearby and the water coming out of his tap is at 0.5 excuse me 0.25 ammonia. Now if you look up you know, if you Google how to lower ammonia, everyone, everyone has various suggestions, but the number one suggestion is do more water changes. Well, now what are you supposed to do if your water is the reason you got high ammonia? Now, Colton had a pretty reasonable solution and I'm going to include his solution in, in this video and then I'm going to add uh, a little bit of steroid pumping up to, uh, to his suggestion. In my previous video I talked about how uh, cities add ammonia to form chloramine and so if you break down the chloramine you end up with more ammonia and you know to do that we add chemicals. I also talked in that video about how agricultural runoff can bring in nitrates from fertilizer. It can also bring in ammonia from excess urine. You got a lot of livestock nearby you're gonna probably have ammonia especially if you're on a private well. Now my well here is nice and deep and we don't have a lot of critters. I mean, we do, we've got quite a few, but not comparatively. <laughs> Plus, that nice deep well I've, I'm talking about, the earth around here is all hard, hard packed clay. So, you know, I, I don't have a lot of problem with iron or, or whatever. I have high pH and uh, very little contamination otherwise. Is pH a high contamination? Well, it is to fish keepers, especially if you like South Americans like I do. So what can you do? Well, first off, the natural reaction of the modern fish keeper is to go grab some uh, Tetra Ammonia Safe, or uh, my favorite would be Prime. Um, but I think adding chemicals uh, actually hurts your filters in the long run. It just camouflages the, the problem. Now, back in the old days, there were still people like Colton that had runoff from livestock. And so what did they do? Well, first off, remember in uh, at least one of my other videos, um, maybe there was the one on, on the city versus well, or maybe it was the one on carbon. In fact, I think I'll lump those two in with this one and create a new playlist, just title it Water. Um, carbon does not remove ammonia. So, in the old days, one of the things we did was we used old water. We didn't do water changes all the time because we thought that bringing in new water was bad for the fish. Well, we've since learned to do different. But in this case, uh, maybe the old way is best. No, I'm not saying that. I still believe in water changes, even for Colton. So what do we do? 
well, first off, if you have a lot of ammonia in your tap water, um, you've got to be real careful about feeding, overfeeding fish. More so than most people. You need to probably consider cutting back on the number of fish you have per gallon. Um, because decaying food and fish waste are your two number one sources of ammonia. Well, that and plants. You ought to be keeping your plants well groomed and not let plant debris build up in your tanks. Uh, I will confess that today when I siphoned off my 125 gallon tank, there was a lot of plant debris in a few places. Um, the bad weather kicks my butt and I haven't done a high lot of maintenance on my tanks, but my tanks have a low bio fish load. I can, they can withstand it. I'm not losing fish. And actually my tanks still test out pretty good. Um, but, you know, avoid dead fish, dead leaves, overfeeding, uh, have less fish. Those are all going to help lower ammonia in your tank. But adding a water at 0.25 ammonia, you know, what do you do with that? Well, another thing I would do on my tank, if I had that problem, is I would over, over filter my tank. And that doesn't mean I get a massive great big canister filter that's going to pump it at, you know, a thousand gallons per hour on a 10 gallon tank. <laughs> No, but I would, I would probably take the same approach I use now, basically. And I'm starting to switch over to using more sponge filters, but right now I tend to use HOBs or canisters, and I put a sponge on the intake. Sponge is an extra biological filter uh, that is really nice. And then in my canister or my HOBs, I don't need to do a lot of mechanical filtration because the sponge isn't letting much through. So I pretty much just have media like lava rock, bio balls, um, pot scrubbers, sponges, um, anything that's got a lot of density uh, with a lot of, a lot of pores a lot of openness, not dense in heavy weight. The more bacteria you have, the better your tank is going to be for ammonia. So, you know, maybe if you have 0.25 uh, ammonia in your water, put two, two sponges in there that are both double what one what they recommend for one, if they say this is good for 55, then get the two sizes up and put two of them in there. And then put an HOB or a canister on there too. And just over filter. Um, because that's just more bacteria. And if you, if you aren't using uh, sand, I use sand for my quarry cats, but if you aren't using sand, Consider an under gravel filter. Under gravel filters, I gotta do another video on that too, because under gravel filters, um, that's a wide base for your bacteria to grow on. Um, just heavy filter. Okay. Of course, growing plants helps, but that's more the nitrate end. Um, you know, maybe the fast-growing plants like Java moss and Java fern and anacris or whatever. Um, but I don't know. I don't know how much that would help. What Colton is doing is he's pre-treating his water. For about 24 hours, he, he drops some prime in it and, uh, and pre-treats it. Great idea. That's the old school way. In the old days, we used to pre-treat water for any time we 
we set up a tank or did a water change and like I say we didn't do a lot of water changes but we would pre-treat our water um, around here I I tend to pre-treat I'm doing it less and less often as I've acclimatized my fish to higher pH levels um, my water comes out at 8.4 to 8.8 .8, usually closer to 8.8 .8. I keep most of my fish at 7.4 to 7.6 and I've got my tanks pretty stable and uh, able to keep them there even by adding 20 percent straight out of my tap so I'm okay but Colton's pre-treating his water for 24 hours and it's still got some ammonia I'm sure I didn't ask for those measurements you know um, maybe 48 hours treat it and then test it and see where it's at now I would not be using the chemicals I would be not be using prime I would be using a massive amount of air stones and what do I use I have a 45 gallon trash can and maybe you know if you have four or five hundred gallons of fish like I do maybe you need two or three of those but I would put a massive amount of air stones in there I would have that water just bubbling up because the oxygen exchange at the surface is going to help remove the ammonia second I would probably consider If, if you do water changes once a week, which is what I prefer, what I recommend, then why not have that water set up a week in advance? Maybe you don't have to go crazy on the, the air stones then, but I'd still put in quite a few. <clears throat> Test that water every day while you're pre-treating it. Um, maybe you just want to put in a massive massive filter maybe take one of those big coffee cans or the big peanut butter jars or something or uh, a couple of two liter bottles of soda without the soda and uh, you know put a lot of K2 K1 coldness in there or you know just lava rock it can be cheap and and just run a massive pump through there to keep the water flowing around and running through that all that stuff and see if that doesn't do it um, that's what I'd be doing the last thing I'd probably consider doing if I had if I just couldn't get the ammonia down even with running filters on it for a week with no fish in it because remember the bacteria lives in the water if there's ammonia in there believe me there's bacteria that's going to live off that ammonia you cannot kill bacteria well you can kill some of it and if you have biological filtration because you don't need mechanical you don't have any fish waste you don't have you don't need to strain anything just go with biological sponges and lava rock and coldness and whatever and just filter it like crazy and if you still have ammonia maybe go to water changes every two weeks but then you better be real careful on your tanks better test them in between maybe it's going to be better to add a little ammonia those are all my tips you look around at, at Google today or YouTube today and everyone says water changes if the problems in your water water changes ain't gonna fix it let's go old school let's go old school pre-treat that stuff and find all the different ways to help that'll make it happen mostly air stones and biological filter run filters on water before you put it in a fish tank sounds crazy It'll help. 
Hey, in the meanwhile, have fun. Bye.